I just did a terrible thing and I was so frustrated with myself. I filmed three videos and then I went to turn off the camera and wouldn't you know it, I didn't even turn my mic on. Let me make sure my mic is on right now. It is, everything is fine. I've been having a little bit of a challenging time lately. So I'm gonna do a little bit of chit chat. So those of you guys who are new and don't know me or just not interested in chit chat, feel free to fast forward to the fragrance bit. But I've had a lot of things going on, a lot on my plate. I feel like I'm spreading myself really thin and I'm also not feeling that great. So I never know how to start these videos. This is my second cup of coffee. I woke up at 4 a.m. Just because my brain does that to me now. So my son will usually sleep until like 5.20, 5.30. And if I slept until that time, I'd be great. But for some reason, my brain wakes me up earlier. So then I'm lying in bed after that and I'm like, I need to get back to sleep. I need to get back to sleep. And then I'm psyching myself out because I can't get back to sleep because I'm putting myself on a timer that I need to get back to sleep so that I can get enough sleep. And at that point, I'm like, I might as well just get up. Like, I'm fully awake. And then I do end up sleeping for like 20 more minutes and then I wake up so groggy. So yeah, I'm like back to a proper two cups a day. Also, I've been dealing with the most annoying health situation lately, which is like a tonsillitis that has been for three months now. My tonsil is inflamed. It bothers me so much. Like my throat will constantly get like a little bit sore, then it'll get back to normal, then it'll get sore. So then I get some of you guys commenting things like, oh, you sound a little different. And like, here's the thing. I film when my son is sleeping in the next room most of the time. So I do have to keep my volume down a little bit. So that combined with my throat situation is like, it's not the most pleasant thing for me to like read those comments, but I understand that you guys are noticing a difference. So I figured I should address that. Like the reality of the situation is what I just told you guys. So there's nothing I can do. Like have eventually is going to resolve itself. Thankfully today I can film with my normal mic and I think my normal volume, but yeah, if my voice sounds like a smoker's voice, it's because of my tonsillitis. I feel it myself. It's irritating and it's kind of getting me down in the dumps. The other thing is my wisdom teeth have been killing me for a long time. Like I've really been putting this on the back burner, especially like the bottom left. It hurts so much when it cuts through and it's like, it's constant. So I need to get those removed. So now I basically need to like batch film majorly so that I have content to put out for you guys while my face looks like a potato because it's going to be swollen and I'm going to be in a lot of pain probably. And I've heard some horror stories. So now I'm terrified to get my wisdom teeth out. So those things going on that are not ideal. Also, I will be porting my decant shop over to Shopify. So I'm kind of outgrowing my current provider. It's very limiting and I need to port everything over to Shopify. I'll probably be doing that mid-May. So look out for the announcement. I'll be putting it as a community post or on Instagram. But before I do that, I will be running a sale. So yeah, just keep your eyes open for that and then once it's all over to Shopify, everything's gonna be a lot more seamless and better organized. So I'm really looking forward to that, but it's a big undertaking. And I'm like looking at myself in the camera and I feel like my cheeks look a little bit too red. I tried out this thing today. It's this, I got a sample at Sephora. I tried this color and it is so pigmented. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Then I was like frantically trying to like scrub it off. But yeah, if my cheeks look extra flushed, it's this stuff, it's like, it's potent. And on the note of makeup, thank you guys so much for complimenting my makeup lately. I am not a makeup artist. I have no clue what I'm doing. I just kind of slap it on and make it work. I'm probably not doing it correctly, but you've been asking for a tutorial. So I'm going to have to do that for you soon and just kind of do my quick daily makeup as soon as I figure out how to set up the lighting and camera for that. Cause yeah, I, I want to film it nicely where you can see what I'm actually doing, but I actually have never filmed a makeup tutorial. I don't know. I'm going to have to tinker with that when I have some time, hopefully within the next month or so. But yeah, it's super easy and it takes me less than half an hour. And thank you guys for complimenting me. With all that housekeeping out of the way, I want to share with you guys some fragrances that I wish I had been wearing lately. I've been testing out so many fragrances and I've been discovering some really amazing gems. So I'm gonna film that video next, but I wanted to share with you guys some of my, some of my FOMO fragrances that I should have been wearing and miss and just kind of wish I've been wearing more lately. So I'll start with my scent of the day and that is Bulgari Omnia Crystalline Eau de Toilette. This is a really nice 
airy, kind of fresh, easy, gentle floral. It just smells super clean, unique enough. And I think perfect for an office environment. I really, really love the whole Bulgari Omnia collection. They are all actually really, really nice. And this one is just, for me, the one that I gravitate to the most. So when I was going through all of my fragrances, I was like, why haven't I been reaching for this? So this is going on my FOMO tray and it will be right here so that I reach for it more often. I'm really into the clean fragrance vibe, especially come summer so i miss byredo blanche like i need to be wearing this more this to me just smells like the perfect light laundry scent with some florals like i'm i'm smelling peony and just a really nice clean soapiness it smells to me like when you walk by someone's house and i've described it this way before and you smell that they're doing laundry and they're just using the best laundry detergent and you just like take a nice deep whiff. I, mean, I don't know, maybe I'm the only weirdo that does that, but I love the smell of like other people doing laundry and walking by their houses. So this just smells like the best laundry detergent and I wanna smell like that. I also love Way North Bondi. It's another clean scent. It has less sweetness and that type of floral than Blanche, but I feel like if you like one, you'd like the other. This one smells a little bit more like a hair product. It's powdery, like way more powdery than Blanche in my opinion. It has violet and it smells like like a little bit peppery. Maybe it has some apple blossom and it's really nice. If I actually got this as soon as I used up my leave-in conditioner that had the same scent. I love their leave-in conditioners. And it just smells like a really elegant hair product without any sweetness, no fruity floral thing, just a unique high quality hair product. And it's a clean fragrance brand as well for what it's worth. Of all the way fragrances, North Bondi is by far my favorite. As you guys know, I really love Wood Sage and Sea Salt and a fragrance that has a similar vibe is Lavande in Love from Bastide. I was talking about this recently with my friend who I gave a decant to and she's running low and I completely forgot that I even had this. It was like on another table somewhere. I found it and I was like, oh, I need to be wearing more of this. I love wearing this in the evening because it has this sweet lotion-like lavender scent, but still the saltiness, the same salty kind of quality that you find in Wood Sage and Sea Salt. Anyway, I think if you love Wood Sage and Sea Salt, you would really love this. Performance-wise, this is better, and price point-wise, I think this one's a little bit better as well. I, I'm gonna do a separate video on all fragrances that if you love like Woods Agent Sea Salt, you would enjoy as well. Not dupes, but just similar vibe. Also, Narciso Crystal. This is like an airy, lighter version of the Poudre. Perfect for summer, super elegant, kind of minimalistic, just really pleasant. And this is one of the only Narciso cubes that I can wear in warm weather. And I need to be wearing this. I loved it last summer and I forgot about it. I, I only remembered it as I was talking about it in my wedding fragrance uh, recommendations video, which I'll link up here. This would be the perfect wedding guest scent, I think. It's, and it's such a lovely bottle too. Even for a, like a minimalistic bride, I think this would work really nicely and would look beautiful in photos. I might even wear this to a wedding myself. I am going as a guest. Actually, I'm a bridesmaid, but there's an engagement party this June, and I think this might be my fragrance. It's between this and one other one that I'll show you guys in a bit. It is just so feminine and delicate and very airy. Of the florals in here, I pick up mostly freesia and just that signature sweet musk, but it's a lot more dialed down and softer in this scent. I also really need to wear more of my Tiffany & Co EDP. This is so like crisp Cinderella vibes. The bottle really is an appropriate packaging for the scent. This totally communicates what the fragrance smells like and the effect that it gives. It's a dry iris musky scent with touches of patchouli and citrus. There are some other florals in here, but it's mostly like a crisp iris scent. I would consider this a cool fragrance. Like it gives me the feeling of like a cold breeze. The only thing I don't like about the scent, and it's probably why I haven't been reaching for it, is that initial opening blast kind of smells like nail polish, but it goes away pretty much as soon as it hits your skin, like maybe a minute, and then it's gone and it turns into that beautiful fragrance. But that's probably why I kind of kept it on the back burner. Anyway, it's going on my FOMO tray. Prada Candy Kiss, probably my favorite of the Prada Candy collection. This smells a little bit like the Moroccan oil products, it's a sweet musky scent that smells like it's coated in a powdered sugar. Like when you eat a donut and it has that powdered sugar and then you just wanna go and just taste that delicious powdered sugar, this is the powdered sugar. With just a really nice, soft, clean musk, 
For some reason to me, I smell a little bit of a soft almondy facet in the Prada Candy collection. Mostly this one and the original. Something comes through a little bit almondy for me, but I love it. And in a very similar style, I'm just gonna touch on very quickly because it's discontinued. It's the Zara Musk 004. This has a similar style to Prada Candy Kiss, but also this definitely has almond. You can really smell it and it smells quite similar to the discontinued Maison Lancôme Iris Rage. That one was beautiful. This is a very similar effect. It's light, I do spray a lot of it, and I tucked it away because it's discontinued, and I'm just kind of savoring it, but I do have it available on the Decant shop, the scented.ca, if anybody wants to check it out. Now, my long lost love that was hiding from me on the top shelf, which is above eye level, so I didn't even see it, Banana Republic's Black Platinum. I think I've been talking about this fragrance since the start of my channel, and I just fell in love with it. This was an instant love. This has a sweet metallic effect. It's, it's weird and wonderful. It has a note of leather. I believe it has pink pepper, cactus flower, unique, very, very unique and niche smelling. The only problem with this is the performance. I have to spray legitimately like 20 sprays. This has, okay, if you like Narciso for her EDT, similar, but a lot more toned down, like the muskiness isn't quite as intense and as sharp. This is a lot airier and I would consider this almost a freshy, like borderline freshy. So unique. I don't know that Banana Republic has this yet, but I just remembered that So Avant Garde carries Banana Republic and I do work with them. I have a code for 20% off. It's Yana20. If you can find it there, it's probably the best place to grab it right now because it's been out of stock everywhere from what I've seen as of late. I have two backup bottles, so I'm gonna be using this up. My goal is to use the rest of this bottle up before the end of this year. Another fragrance that I can't believe I haven't been wearing is from Italie d'Orange and this is Yes I Do. This is a marshmallowy, sensual, clean lily of the valley scent with a soapiness about it and a nice fresh jasmine. I really love this fragrance. This is probably one of my favorite marshmallowy scents because marshmallow Sometimes, like for example in Killian Love, it comes off like a little bit too intense and it's a very occasional scent. As much as I love it, it's like a once in a while and a cold weather scent. This is warm weather all the way and it would also be a perfect wedding fragrance either for a bride or a guest. I, I might wear this one to that outdoor engagement party. It's a sensual, feminine, clean cloud. Here's a really affordable gem, and this is from Yves Rocher, and this is Sable Fauve. This is basically just a benzoin scent. It's a kind of like a resinous, rich, warm type of vanillic scent. I love benzoin, I don't really like vanilla. So I absolutely love this, and it's minimalistic, but it still smells like not cheap. Like it definitely doesn't smell the price that it is. I would highly recommend the scent. I just found it, well actually my son found it, he was playing in my fragrance cabinet this morning, started rolling it around on the floor, I was like, wait a minute, what have we here? And then I was like, I can't believe I forgot about this, I should have been wearing this, like all fall and winter. It's so cozy, beautiful, a little bit sweet, deep, resinous, just enveloping and, and warm and pleasant, super uh, unisex as well, so I think men could enjoy this fragrance too. I think it's very unisex. Like, if you like Zara Ritual Medictive, I think you would like this. I'm giving you a lot of, if you like this, then you'll like this in this video, but it's just coming to me. And I forgot about my beloved Amber Musk. I wore this like all of last year. It was like my signature scent. And then I've been decanting a lot of it. So I do have more backup bottles, but I think I was just savoring it because it had been selling so actively on the decant shop that I was worried I wouldn't have enough for myself. So I hadn't like been wearing it, but ugh, this is the most beautiful, like pillowy, like, you know what it smells like? This smells like the way that the pompous grass looks. To me, this is just the perfect scent for a nice, cozy, like fuzzy beige outfit. It smells so soft and not like the name suggests because Amber Musk to me suggests like a heavier scent. This is almost clean. Now, here's a layering combo that I discovered last year when I picked up this fragrance, and this is from Maison Chabot, and this is Les Concentré, and it smells like condensed milk. Exactly like condensed milk, maybe like the, like Dulce de Leche a little bit. Something between just like the white condensed milk and Dulce de Leche. And 
Mon Guerlain, either the EDP or the EDT. The EDT is discontinued, but I still have it. Anyway, these two combined together are just the coziest, most comforting scent. Very hug-like. It is like drinking a warm cup of milk, or sometimes I make like a lavender latte. Kind of like a lavender latte if you put a nice big juicy spoon of condensed milk and just like worked it in there nice and warm so good so this is my layering combo that i'm going to be reaching for so that is it for all of the fragrances that are on my fomo tray and that i need to be revisiting that i've missed so much and just wish i'd been wearing and i hope you guys enjoyed leave me a comment down below let me know if you share this experience i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye wait I forgot another fragrance that I forgot. The Forgotten Forgotten. Chanel number no. five, Lo. Oh my goodness, this has been my favorite Chanel for the longest time. I've been wearing it for years. It's almost empty. I got a backup bottle. Please do not mind the mess. I started putting the fragrances away and then I discovered that I forgot to tell you guys about this forgotten fragrance. This is a modern, clean take on the classic number no. five. It is citrusy. It smells to me like a sparkling lime water. Like there's a slight bitterness, super modernized. I like this one a lot better than the Eau Première. This is the one for me. I wear it a ton in the summer. Well, I did in previous years and then I forgot. I forgot to wear it. So that's it. Now the video is really over.